All right, Mark, so when I say to you, characterize for me UFC 191, how would you describe this event? You're putting me in a position where I can't say anything really that, that nice about it because we're, we're coming off the two biggest pay-per-views of the year, and now we're in Las Vegas, which is typically a fight town where there are big fights, and it feels a little bit lackluster, I guess you could say. As much as I as I will really enjoy watching Demetrius Johnson and John Dawson fight on Saturday night, I think it'll be a really really great elite high level mixed martial arts fight. But it feels like there's not a lot of buzz for this fight in, in town. There aren't a lot of UFC fans walking around the MGM Grand, so it just feels like something. Especially the last time I was here was UFC 189, right. so it's definitely scaled back a little bit since, since, since that. It feels to me like I actually like the card, but it feels like the card that didn't need to happen. You know, like, Johnson Dotson is by far the best flyweight fight the UFC could put on right now, but I almost feel like it would have been better on a UFC 193, a card like that, below Ronda, right. or, you know, 194, which, of course, is stacked by now, but below Conor Aldo. It didn't need to happen now, and I know they've tried to, you know, in the past they tried to put Rockhold Wyman on this card. Right. They couldn't do that. They tried to put Verdum on this card. Couldn't happen. But even Mia Arlovsky, like, I feel like that's a fun fight, and especially if you've been covering and following the sport for a long time, you know it's 10 years in the making. Right. But it doesn't need to happen right now. They're both great stories, they're both on the rise. Right. There's just a bunch of fights on the car where I almost feel like they would have been better served spreading this out over the next few months, you know what I mean? And they just had to fill this slot. I agree, and uh, I think that the time is coming where you have to give Demetrius Johnson a chance as a co-main event rather than being the focal point. It seems like there's a lot of negativity toward him, you know. Oh, you know, he's he's not, he's too boring, you know, he doesn't say enough before the fight, he doesn't sell the fight enough. Uh, his fighting style is, personally I find it, I find him fun to watch, but I know people don't, I know there are definitely people who don't enjoy watching that type of style. It's more of a deliberate, you know, patient. He finished his fight for later on. Uh, I think give him a chance, you know, like you said, under, under uh, you know, a Ronda Rousey fight. You know, a co main event, you know, so he doesn't have to, he yeah, doesn't have to do all of the of the heavy lifting as far as promotional stuff. Someone else can do that, and then some of those casual fans can then see him and then decide on, for themselves whether or not they like him. You know, because right now putting him as the as the marquee name is is not really doing him or the UFC any favors. Yeah, and I've said this before. Like, it feels like every time you main events, which has been the case for the last few fights, right? This is what we're talking about. Like, if he was the co main event of a big card, even if he was back on Fox. We would not even be talking about this. This would never come right. up. He would not be answering questions about this. He even said when he wanted to fight on this card, I want to be co-main event to White mm -hmm. Morocco. He gets it as well. Mm -hmm. That being said though, I think he's done a much better job of putting himself out there, being outspoken. I think Dotson bring this, brings this out in him. I think he actually really gets annoyed by this guy. Mm -hmm. And that rivalry there is making this one of the more interesting DJ fights in a long time. Like, mm -hmm. yes, it may not have the hype of a you know, 189, 194, whatever. But I don't know. Maybe it's because we're we're just hours away now. I'm actually kind. Of, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, I think it's a fantastic fight. It's the best flyweight fight that they could put on mm -hmm. for a very long time. Because I don't think Cejudo's ready. I think he'll need a couple more. Right. Benavidez has already got. You know what I mean? I, I actually, if you love MMA and forget about all the other crap, this is a very very solid main event. I started to get a little bit more excited about the fight. At Media Day, when they did the face-off, and face-off was interesting, right? John Dotson uh, is, is is a goofball. You know, he he's, yep. you know he really likes to have fun with it, but uh, I, I, he was incredibly serious when he walked up and he faced off with Mighty Mouse and looked him right in the eye, and he looked like was, they really don't like each other. It's, it's, he didn't do they the, really, the magician pose, that right? He only until like after when they, well, when they the people, faced, but not uh, the face people, to face. but not face to face. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think that he's maturing a little bit, and, and he knows that this is a really big fight, and this is a you know a legacy maker for him. I think um, I think that I, again. I think it'll be a really, really good fight. I just don't think there's a, a, a mass appeal for it. I just don't think a lot, a lot of people will be watching. I'm not sold on Labor Day weekend as a big fight weekend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like Memorial Day weekend, you right. know, all that stuff. Like, you know, people are hunkering down right, or right. party, whatever. Labor Day almost feels like a time where it's like the last weekend of the summer, and you want to be out, and you're kind of just right. like escaping from. The, you know what I mean? I don't know. Right. It doesn't. I don't put two and two together. I know. Labor Day has kind of been a weird one for them. Like 152, 
You know, excuse me, 151 was canceled. It was supposed to be Labor Day. 177 177 was year. a weird one. Yep. Um, they had kind of issues. They, they they sort of fell into a good spot with Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was supposed to be TJ Grant and all this. It just always feels like right. something wacky goes on Labor Day. But I think I think it's great. And I don't know. Do, do you agree that this is the best flyweight fight that they could put on as far as championship fight for a long time? I agree. Because I think, I mean, if you look at the first fight, it was super close. Super close. He dropped them a couple the, times. The Dotson won the first the first two rounds. You can make the argument that he I don't won think he won the fight. Two. I don't think he won the fight. I think right. he won the first two rounds. Yes. You I, can make the argument. I have to go back and watch it again, but you can make the argument. Here's my thing. I think DJ has gotten a lot better since then. I don't know if the Oops. same can be said for John Dotson. How's the French fry? Yes. Enjoy it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if he's improved. I think the gap has widened between Demetrius Johnson and the rest. I don't know mm -hmm. if Dotson, who I think is number two, I don't know if that's, I don't know if they're as close as they were back in Chicago. And when I look at the fight, I wonder if John Dotson has any other way to win other than knocking him out. Like, he's not going to take him down. He's not going to outgrapple him. Right. You know, he's, he's not going to outwrestle him, like I said. He's not going to outcardio him. Other than knocking him out, which, you know, he, he dropped him, he rocked him, there's no doubt about it. Right. How else does John Dodson win this? I think um, I think he could win a decision. You think so? He could win a decision if something along the lines of a, of a Burrell Dillashaw one happens where maybe he gets Johnson early and he, and he wobbles him and he, and he kind of changes the, changes the fight with that one that one big punch. That could be when he wins a decision, you know, because Johnson will, will not be himself for, for five rounds. but. To your point, yes, I, I do agree. And and you have to wonder about about Dodson. His game is, is really predicated on athleticism. And this is his second fight back from uh, from a torn ACL. Right. You never know how a guy's gonna respond a after that. And also, he's in his thirties now. You know, his his, his athletic peak Good as point. athletic peaks go is probably not maybe not over, but toward the end now. So he's not he's not the same guy as he was when he was twenty eight and he was this explosive athletic you know, freak of nature. So I think he still has that, but Demetrius Johnson is, he's really incredible in all aspects of the game. There, he doesn't really have any holes. When you look at all around, well-rounded fighters in the world, he's in the conversation for the best. I mean, I would say that John Jones is probably better. Jones, Aldo, Johnson? I would say, I would say Demetrius Johnson is, is more well-rounded than Jose Aldo. Mm. He's got better wrestling. You know, we don't. We haven't really seen a lot of his jiu-jitsu off his back, but he submitted guys before. Good point. And you could also make the argument that Tamija Johnson is a better technical striker than John Jones is. John Jones has creativity in his game, but Tamija Johnson, when it comes to just fundamental, and he's like the Tim Duncan right. of, of the UFC. He does everything correct, everything right, and that isn't always what you know gets him the the paper you buys or, or the or the headlines. Yeah, but. it's like if he was an athlete in any other sport, you would right. never have to answer any of these questions no. about sell. You know what sure. I mean? He, he, if he's Tim, Tim Duncan never has to answer a question about the NBA on ABC right. ratings right. or how many jerseys he sells. Correct. But unfortunately for him, he's in prize fighting, and that's part of the game, whether mm -hmm. he likes it or not. I think these are valid questions to ask someone. I mean, if you're going to be put mm -hmm. on pay-per-view, which at this point is only being used by two sports at this point, boxing and MMA. Mm -hmm. WWE doesn't really use it anymore in, right. in the traditional sense. These are, they are valid questions. 100%. And unfortunately, I, I don't even know, like, do you think that it, it, if Conor McGregor was a 125er with his personality, would people care about the size? Yes. Is it because no. of, is it, is it because of DJ's personality or is it because of the small guy thing? What, what, what do you think it is? It's, it's a combination, it's a combination. It's not solely because he's a smaller guy. Like, if, if Conor McGregor was a flyweight, and after the way that Conor McGregor acts, I think it would have the same effect. No one would care. No one would care that he was, that, he was that, that small. I don't get that whole it's a thing. I, I don't get that whole thing like, oh, I'm bigger than this guy, so it's not interesting. Since when Me neither. We, it's a bizarre... Maybe, po possibly Maybe you I could relate. be biased. Yes. I could be biased about this because I'm a small guy myself. But but yeah, right. I don't I don't think... I, I think that it's really about the personality. I mean, smaller guys in other sports have been, have been popular, but... Has the UFC done a good enough job? Look at his backstory. Deaf mom, never met his dad. Everything, you know, like the guy's the guy has a fantastic from a selling point backstory. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has yeah. so many layers to him. He's he overcome a lot. It's an improbable journey to get to this point. 
Have they done a good enough job, in your opinion, of letting the world know about him? No, but it's a two-way street also. I think part of it is that he's been guarded about some of the things that he says and he wants to, he wants to you know, release to the media. You know, he's, he's a private guy and he, he really wants to just be, he doesn't want to be a prize fighter. He wants to be an athlete. You know, yeah. he wants to be someone who isn't scrutinized because he doesn't get enough ratings or he doesn't get, you know, enough pay-per-view buys. He wants to be solely judged on his athletic achievements, which, like you said, it doesn't really doesn't exist work. in this space. It's not. It's Unless not. You're fighting on free TV. It's not the NBA. It's not. You know. It's not MLB. It's not the NFL. It's. It's a sport that's driven by ratings and, and pay per view by rates and, and money and, and that, all that kind of thing. It's a promotion. Right. You know. It's not a league. It's a promotion. So, by the way, I'm, to I'm totally burying the lead here, but I have to. Have to what the heck is going on with what you ordered? Can we just? I don't know. I, I didn't just know address the situation. Not. We have. I was. Uh, I'm bacon. on the fence. In pancakes? Yes. It's bacon baked into the pancakes. It's okay. bacon pancake dippers. Okay, and what's this? This is just maple syrup? It's like a, it's kind of spinach. like a like a spicy like uh oh, spicy bourbon syrup. And this look at look at young Mark Ramundi really stepping up to the plate here. We yeah. have uh, a sandwich. Chicken in a waffle. It's like a sandwich. It's fried chicken. Um, it's a, a, a fried chicken sandwich, the waffle as the bread it's with some gravy. I'm proud uh, of you. Uh, yeah, and he's fried, and, but and I'm this? not gonna eat probably. This is deep. That's, that's no, I'm what? staying away from that. I Own it, baby. No, I can't, I can't do that. It's Let a, the world know. It's deep fried chocolate chip cookies. They call it here at MTO Cafe the death by chocolate. This is your so, typical and, breakfast? And that's, what, that's what would happen if I yes. ate it. it, would be, it would is be this death. your typical breakfast? This, this is, is not my typical, typical Friday breakfast, morning. But this, is, um, this place is, uh, as far as Vegas goes, there is This is your favorite spot. Many, uh, yeah, you talk about this place all the time. MTO Cafe. The best. All right, well, I can't wait to see you eat all of this. I'm just having a normal breakfast, but I'm I'm living vicariously through you. Let me ask you about Frank Mir mm -hmm. and uh, Andre. Do you feel do you feel the same way that I do about it? Like I'm torn. I love it. I love the nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I love that it's 10 years in the making. They were supposed to fight so many years ago before the motorcycle accident. I just kind of feel like they shouldn't be fighting at this point. Why knock each other out? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I agree. Literally and figuratively. Yep. Why cross one off the list? They're both doing, they're, they're great stories, comeback stories yes. of the year, right? These two are like one and two for comeback fighter, <clears throat> comeback fighter of the year. Sure. Excuse me, my, my mash, uh, hash browns got in my throat. Mash browns? Yes. Very good, right? Why are they fighting? I don't get it. And even Arlovsky's surprised by it. Explain he, it to me. The, the, thing, the thing about the heavyweight division right now is that there are a lot of guys who have big names on, on winning streaks right now, guys who are making career resurgences and I felt like they had a lot of options. They had a lot of options as far as um, who they were going to match up. A lot of good options. I didn't think that Arlovsky versus Mir was one of those good options. Uh -huh. And I like Miocic versus Rothwell even less. Hmm. That's going to be in Dublin um, next month. I don't Why? like that either. Because I think that, because there's, no, there's, no, there's no story there. You know, Rothwell has a story with other guys that he's fought before. Yeah. I thought Rothwell or Arlovsky would have uh, made a lot of sense for a fight. I thought, you know, Maybe yeah, Mir, Mir could have fight, fought any one of these guys, but I don't know if, if, if Arlovsky is the guy right now. And I really don't like the fact that they're, that they're thinking about, it's not official yet, but they, they want to do a rematch, immediate rematch between Velasquez and... and well, Dana would confirm that to me. He UFC it. tonight. Yes, good that's, plug. That's Excellent as official plug. as it gets. Sure. The official um, but, news and information show. But, you know, Ronda went on... Uh, Good Morning America, and now she would be fighting at UFC 195, and now she's fighting in November, so. Well, it's an injury. No such thing as, uh, sure, sure. as, as official until it's official. Until so, okay, so if you were booking that division yeah. right now, what would you have done with Verdun? Well, I mean, if, if this, uh, this guy named Fedor comes back, I think that oh, that's I, would, what you uh, do? I would put him, I'd put him in there right away. Yeah, why not? Well, there's a chance he could usurp him, right? He could jump over Kane. Uh, it's so possible. what would you have done with Mir and Arlovsky? You would have put Arlovsky, Rothwell, Mir, Miocic? I don't. I don't know if I would have done Mir versus Miocic, but I think that I think that there were there were other there were other options for Mir. Well, you got to give me one. Well, if you look at the top of the division right now, Verdum is the champion. Velasquez is, is coming off a loss, so there right. were you know you could have give you could have done you could have done Velasquez versus Mir. You could have done really. Why not? Th that would have halted Mir's great story. Remember where Mir was at the beginning of this year. Yeah. Coming off a drubbing. Why are you Why are you assuming that Velasquez is just gonna trample Mir? I think his skill uh, set is, is a tough. I mean, Frank Mir maybe five years ago with his jujitsu. Cain Velasquez coming off a bad loss. I think oh. is a bad matchup for Frank Mir at this stage of his career. I think of all the fighters available, mm -hmm. I think I think Rothwell Mir would have made a little more sense. I just don't love the idea 
of these two amazing stories, these comeback yeah. stories, these former champions, fan favorites, mm -hmm. crossing each other off. You right. know, one of them, you know, the winner is gonna look great. He'll probably be one step closer. Mm -hmm. But also when you consider the fact that Verdum and Kane are probably going to fight January, February at this point because everything's right. booked, he might have to fight again. Sure. Now you're just really playing with fire. So I want to enjoy the fight for what it is. Like, it's Miralovsky finally, 10 years later. Right. But as we like to play a matchmaker from time to time, I can't enjoy it from that perspective. The, the one good thing about what they're doing with heavyweights is that we're finally going to see the Dos Santos versus Overeem fight that everyone's been dying to see for, for years at this point that's got made twice already, right? And then had to be canceled twice. Right. That's that's the one good byproduct of this, of this matchmaking. We're going to see that. If you had a vote for comeback fighter of the year, do you go Mir or Arlovsky? Well, comeback fighter of the year is the whole year and if they fight Saturday night. No, right now. Right now? Yeah. I'm going to, I would still say, story? I would still say Arlovsky. I would say Mir. Why Arlovsky? I would say you're wrong. Why? Because Arlovsky's beaten better fighters. He's beaten, mm. he's beaten higher level talents right now. He beat Travis Brown. That's true. That's First a good round point. knockout. I just thought Mir was done. I really thought he had nothing left in him. Did you really think that he would be able to knock out Big Floyd? Which nope. Double A did. That's what I like to call him. And then knock out Todd Duffy in a crazy fight. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess the competition, but I really thought that he was done. Like Arlovsky, I still felt like he had a glimmer. Yep. What Mir has done has been Nothing short of remarkable. Credit to his team, Ricky Lundell, sure. Angelo Reyes. I think he's put you know a nice team together, yeah. but it's a great story. It's always fun to see Frank Mir back, especially in Las Vegas. It feels mm -hmm. like you know 2009, 2008, 2007, yeah. that era. So I, I, I want to appreciate for what it is. Sometimes in MMA, I think we overthink things. Perhaps. And we can't enjoy the moment. Perhaps. This one, I just went, when it was announced, I was like, ah, yeah. I wish they weren't you know going sure. toe to toe. Okay, let's talk about Rumble Johnson. <laughs> sure. The lightning let's rod do, that is that. Anthony Johnson. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who has reinvented himself, mm -hmm. who had a pass, overcame that, was suspended indefinitely, goes to Sweden, knocks out Alexander Gustafsson, supposed to fight John Jones, doesn't fight John Jones, fights Daniel Cormier, does, does and says all the right things leading up to that fight right. and after that fight, puts the belt on Daniel Cormier's waist. Sure. I mean, he's very humble in defeat. Humble rumble. Then goes on Facebook and, and writes his post. We don't have to get into it. Now this dog thing comes up. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, should he be fighting on this card? It's a tough question. Yes, what I would know you do? That, I know that a lot of people would say no about that. I think, I think, the, I think the problem with Anthony Johnson is, is, I feel like, and I don't know him you know, outside, of, outside of the very small amount of you know, media access that we get, but I just feel like he's... He's remorseful about, about things that he does to an extent. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he has a tendency to blame others and, and, and blame the media and, and everything like that. And when really, no one would have known about this, this latest incident if he didn't himself, he did himself go on Facebook and write about it. No one would have ever known about it. That's the worst part of this whole thing. And I, and I think that, I, think that I, don't, I don't know if Anthony Johnson is, is a bad guy, because again, I don't have that kind of insight into who he is a, a, as a person in, in a day-to-day, -day, in his day-to-day -day life. But the things that I've seen, it seems like he may have some, some anger issues. You know, he, he may, it seems like, and he, and he said it himself, well, yeah. you know, I get mad. You know, I'm human, I get angry. But not everyone, when they get angry, goes on Facebook and makes a, a long rant about, about a, a particular person. Also, and, you're a public figure. Sure. And disparages them the way that, that he right. did. And, and, you know, you could really, reading that post, you could... You could see the anger. You could you could see. You could feel it. You could feel you could feel like the. I mean, he was very angry, and um, you know, the, he he agreed to do the the anger counseling. I guess now after the UFC investigated the incident, I think that could be good for him if he really embraces it and, and says, "I need help." I don't know if he does. You know, I asked him about it at media day, and it seemed like it was one of those things where he just he had to do because right. what the UFC asked him to do. So I mean, I think I. He doesn't seem incredibly remorseful over he this lady. He seems, he seems remorseful to an extent. Like when I talked to him about it, he did say, I should have never said those things about that woman. Right. And I really felt like he, he did mean that. But again, what's, what's to say that he won't get angry again at some, something else and do something similar? We don't know. It seems like you know, there's a bit of a pattern of behavior there. I know that these are, that maybe the Facebook rant and, and possibly throwing a yoga mat isn't the same thing as domestic violence, but 
there's a little bit of, you know, he, he pled uh, no contest to domestic violence charges in 2010. He denies doing any kind of wrongdoing about that, but a no contest plea is almost the same thing in the eyes of, of, a, of a judge as a guilty plea. Right. So that's on his record forever. He's had two other instances uh, where he's been accused of domestic violence. It's a major issue, and, and the UFC has to look at it like, well, is what Anthony Johnson brings to us uh, as a fighter and as, as someone who is, who is somewhat market, marketable, could be a, a guy who could main event, potential events, is he worth all the baggage that, that there is with him? And there is baggage. Now, the latest thing is this, this dog Yeah, explain this to me, because I'm not well versed in that world, and I know you were there when he was talking about it. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert in, in this kind of stuff, but I guess uh, cropping is, is when you kind of you, you clip the dog's ears for cosmetic purposes, and it's done mostly with pit bulls. Now, it's not illegal. It's illegal in Europe, but it's not illegal here. And uh, the American Kennel Club actually says that it's, it's fine. It's an accepted practice as something that's good for breeding and also for health. And, for, and, and some dogs, it is, it is good for health because some dogs get ear infections, some types of breeds, so it actually is a, it, uh, uh, you know, a normal, common uh, practice. But uh, I think that the, the issue is that it's for cosmetic purposes, not for health purposes. And the veteran, like I think the American you know, Veterinary Association I might have just made that up, but veterinarians in general, their their association does not. <laughs> you made up an association. I may have, I may have just made that up. I may have just, I may have just created it right or here. Or start it, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Sure. Um, I, they they are opposed to it. So there's kind of it's a it's a it's a does controversial he admit to doing topic. This? He does admit to doing okay. it. Okay. And he also owns um, he owns a kennel. Right. He owns a kennel where I guess they practice this uh, this behavior. So there's like an online petition out. Right. That was started four months ago, by the way. Mm -hmm. And it's asking the UFC to release him because of this. Now. This is a controversial topic, sure, and I know that people have very strong opinions about it either way. It's not something that should get someone fired for their job because they do it. It's not illegal, right? you know? And with Anthony Johnson, this is a very minor thing in the scope of what he's right. been investigated for and suspended for in the past, so I don't know, but it just seems like these things just keep cropping up. But this is not something that has anything to do with anger, you know? And I, and I sure. think that... You know, from from what I've seen in the past, from from his uh, social media and, and videos that I've seen, it's a dog lover. You know, he really does love his dogs, and uh, he's actually he's been part of like anti-dog fighting charities. He was actually uh, there were some articles about it when Michael Vick was arrested yeah. uh, years ago. I don't know much about this topic, you know, and and I, I I'm not going to look at him any differently because of this. It's a, it's a it's a it's a preference thing, and and again, I know people have strong opinions about it, but there's there's more there's other things to look at with Anthony Johnson that's right. not. I don't think he's abusing dogs. I think it's just a, a, a thing that he does. A lot of other people do as well. Can't really, can't really kill him for that. So in the end, the UFC does this investigation. They, they, I guess for a time, put him on the sidelines for a second, but yeah. they cleared him to fight at 191. So he's mm -hmm. fighting at 191. He's fighting Jimmy Manoa. Mm -hmm. I would be shocked if there's more than two takedown attempts in this fight, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Manoa seems to think that he's going to try to take him down. Manoa's coming off, and, you know, I guess a, a, a subpar performance against Jan Blachowicz. Sure. Got the win, fine. He was injured um, in that fight. He was injured, injured after the fight. Thought it was more serious. Right. Actually, Johnson was supposed to fight Blachowicz, who's on this card against right. Corey Anderson. UFC, I think, made the right choice by booking Manoa versus Johnson. 100%. Is this a showcase fight for Anthony Johnson? Does Manoa have a shot? In, in a battle of strikers, Manuel says he's a better striker, which is interesting, but you know, do you think Manuel even has a chance against Johnson? Not really, mm -hmm. not really. And I like Jimmy Manuel. I think that in a, in a division that is looking for, for guys who can step up and, and possibly be contenders, I, I like Jimmy Manuel in that context. He's an exciting fighter, and I think he can beat a lot of guys, but this, is, this seems to be a matchup that is set up to get Rumble back on, back right. on track to get him back on a, on a winning streak because, look, there aren't that many contenders right now at 205. If John Jones continues to stay out, we don't know when he's coming back. Right. You have the winner of Ryan Bader versus Rashad Evans to get the next title shot after, you know. I think the winner of that should get it, right? The winner of that will probably get the title shot. Obviously, uh, Cormier and Gustafson fight at UFC 192. You'd assume Bader or Evans is next in line for whoever wins that fight. And after that, it's still Rumble. Wide open, yeah. It's, still, it's, it's probably still Rumble or Jimmy Mano if, if he can pull up the win here. There aren't that many guys there. So Patrick Cummins, DC too. Little bit of a little bit of a sleeper. Yes. Uh, I think that, <laughs> yes, absolutely, 100%. And he's fighting Glover Teixeira. So the winner of that fight 
They're, 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 I think they're booking that division very well. They don't have a lot to work with. With what they have. I think they're booking it. I think they're booking it well. I thought Glover looked really, uh, really good in his last fight. I thought that Patrick Cummins looked really good against Fei Zhao. So there's some, the top five or six, pretty, pretty solid, and they're, and they're booking them correctly. So, but to answer your question in a very long-winded way, yes, yes, this is kind of a showcase fight for Rumble. I think they view it that way. Are you on the PVC bandwagon? The PVZ, yes, you, I like you, to call, you started that. I did start you? it, and yeah. I like to get credit for that. I know. So everyone, please send the royalty checks my way, including PVZ's team. Are you buying what she's selling? What is she selling? You know. I don't think she's selling anything. You don't think so? All right. No, not at all. I think that she, I think she's being, she's being smart about it, and her team is being smart about it. This is not someone who's talking about a title shot. She, she. That's true. She thinks, and she, she's 21 years old. Yes. She's, that's, that's, just turn. Just turned 21 years old. She's not calling out Ioana, and she know she understands that she's not there yet. However, she is still. I think it's hard to say she's not a top 10 talent right now at age 21 in the division. Paige Van Zandt. I think that she absolutely is. She's ranked yes. in the top 10. I think that she's better than. She's one of the top 10 best one containers in the world for sure. I, I think being patient with her is absolutely the right idea. I think that. People, when, th when this fight came out, Paige Van Zandt versus Alex Chambers, the people on Twitter were like, oh, you know, why is she getting Alex Chambers to step down from Felice Herrig? You know, this makes no sense. You know, Paige is ranked. Slow down. Yeah. Slow There's down. There's no need to rush these prospects. Why? Why are we, why are we rushing these prospects? So, so by 23, there are, there are, they have four losses on there. Like, relax. Yeah. This is someone who is extremely marketable. They see a very, very bright future for her. In, inside the octagon and outside the octagon, there's nothing wrong with giving her fights that are beneficial to her. Now, Alice Chambers is not a bad fighter. Alice Chambers is actually a very wily, uh, smart fighter. What about that line, though? The line is ridiculous. I think that's silly. That's isn't it, isn't silly. It's like a Ronda much? Rousey line. I checked last night, it was minus 1300. Nah, At one point, it was silly. like minus 1600. That's silly. Yeah. Uh, now, I think Paige Van Zandt will win the we'll fight, do, yeah. but Alice Chambers is not. She's not a terrible fighter. She was, put it, put it this way, her last fight she fought Kylan Kern in Australia, and uh, she was getting beat up yeah. for two rounds. Two and a half rounds she was getting beat up, and she pulled an arm bar out and won the fight in the third round. Yeah. That's not someone that you should put the odds that far against right. because she, can, she has shown that she can battle through adversity. I don't think she's as good as Paige Van Zandt, but can she catch her in a submission if Paige is being too over aggressive, which Paige can be at times as a, as a 21 year old. Absolutely, 100%. But I do think I do think Paige will win. I'm happy that Paige is in Sean Shelby's hands. Sometimes yes. he gets forced to push mm -hmm. people too quickly. I hope that doesn't happen with Cejudo. I hope that yeah. doesn't happen with Paige. I think it's going to be very difficult for them not to push her. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree. Because she's one of the biggest names yes. in, in women's MMA at this yes. point because of the Reebok thing, because of the way that they promote her. She just fought right. on Fox. It's going to be really interesting to see how patient they can be because historically right. in these cases they're not so patient right look at Holly Holm right yep um yep. I think 21 she's been, years old though. yeah that's that's I mean she comes from a good team and and, yep. and everything but uh, I'm very curious to see if they can really truly put her on the fast track as she wants to be right. put that's gonna be you know super interesting uh, another interesting fight on this card which is completely flying under the radar and it's interesting also that it's happening on this particular card it's John Lineker who might be, you know, I said that this is the most, you know, this is the best flyweight title fight they could put on for a mm -hmm. long time. It's such a shame that John Lineker can't make that weight mm -hmm. because Lineker DJ, while I would pick DJ, yeah. is a fight that I would 100%. love to see. And it's a fight that he has earned, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. He's fighting at 135 because the UFC has forced him to go up. He continues to miss the weight or have trouble with the weight. He's right. fighting Francisco Rivera. Do you think that if Lineker wins this fight, yeah. a la Kel Kelvin Gaslam, he can't convince the UFC to bring him back down and be another contender, or do you, you think it's done? He doesn't want to go back to 125. Yeah? He doesn't want to. You asked him? No, but I've, I've, I do read things Sources from say? time to time. Okay. I read articles All right. on other sites. Yes. There are other sites, I guess. Uh, no, he doesn't want to go back down. He doesn't want to go back down to uh, 125, and I think he should, honestly, personally, I think that 125 is the right fit for him, yeah. because I stood next to the guy. He's not an overly large gentleman you know he's not he looks like a 125 he's, he's a pretty short dude anyone that i can stand eye to eye with is pretty small yeah pretty small guy 
So it's I a think shame. that it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame, and he's going to be a lot smaller than someone like Hennon Barrow, who's you know a big 35. Yeah. He's going to be a lot smaller than guys like that. Uh, now, I don't, I don't know. I, at 125, 100%, he's an elite talent. He's top three, top five type guy, and would be for a long time. Uh, at 135, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what his ceiling is. I think it's probably a little bit lower. Um, but I think if he blows the doors off of Rivera, yeah, and given the lack of contenders right now, yes, at yes, 125, 100%. I think he'll be able to convince them. I, I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. And it's great matchmaking. It's it's yeah. really, really good matchmaking. This is a great fight. Great fight and great to put it on this card. Yeah. Right. I wish it was on uh, pay-per-view. You know, it's on Fox Sports 1. What's the difference? It'll well, be seen by more people on Fox Sports 1. It'll be seen by more people on Fox Sports 1, but for a pay-per-view card that not a lot of people are, are going to buy because the main event is not, you know, it's not that doesn't, doesn't have a huge changes star. There? No, it doesn't change it, but you're giving the hardcore fan yeah. who is going to buy it anyway a little more value. Right. Instead of a fight like Corey Anderson and, and Jan Blagovich. Blago you're not a 25 8 guy? Beaston, yeah. Uh, you know, I think. I, I, I mean, look at you right here. I'm, I'm you're beasting, beasting on right this now. Friday yeah. morning. I'm definitely beasting right now. But uh, no, I think that Rivera Lineker, if you want to give, if you want to give the hardcore fans a solid, the ones who are going to buy this thing, you put that fight on pay per view and say, here, you know, he, you're paying 50 bucks. You deserve this fight too. And you have, you have Felder versus Pearson as the feature fan on Fox Sports One is a great fight. So it isn't like you're lacking a feature fight on Fox Sports One. You have that. So why not put what will probably be fight of the night on pay per view. You know, if you're for the you guy. Think that's fight of the night. It's I think fight, main event fight is fight of the, of the year. Night. What? Lineker Rivera. Rivera, Rivera Lineker, man. Those you're guys. Crazy. Okay, let me get your predictions here before we uh, dive into these chocolate chip cookies. Uh, DJ Dotson, we're going with. Demetrius Johnson. I think it'll be a decision. I don't think he'll finish. Mir Arlovsky. I'm gonna go with Frank Mir. Frank Mir. I'm going to go with Frank wow. Mir. The comeback story continues. Comeback My story conti yeah, continues. Yep. Rumble Manoa. Rumble. PVZ. Chambers. Cage. Lineker Rivera. That's a really... I, I'm taking. I'm going to take Francisco Rivera. You are? I'm going to take Rivera. After yeah. all that? After Rivera. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Rivera. How? Knockout. Wow. Yep. Bold. What about Beaston 25-8 against the Polish... The Polish wonder himself, Jan uh, Blachowicz. I think um, I think Corey Anderson will win if he if he uses his wrestling. I think if he if he puts uh, Blagojevich on his uh, is that how we pronounce it? Blagojevich. Yeah. It's not Blagojevich. That's somebody else. No. You, okay. <laughs> you That's totally it. made that up. I did. I did make that up. Um, I've been doing that a lot lately. Felder, I think Anderson. Felder Pearson. Felder. I love Felder. Mm. Felder's awesome. It feels like his stock went up, even though he lost that fight to Barbosa. Out. Like, I'm genuinely excited to watch him fight. He's great. As I spit food out of my mouth. And, qu but and quite the and quite the actor, Paul Felder. A thespian. Quite, quite the thespian. Yes. Yes. Is it thespian or a thespian? It's thespian. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. One last thing. Go big press conference. We're going mm -hmm. right after this. Right. As you just went big in front of me. Here. I did. Which fight are you most looking forward to? The next what four months or so? Which is the one that sticks out? I have to go with. Aldo versus McGregor because oh. there's been so much build up for that fight. I mean, I, I, I wanted to see it in July. Kind of got shipped out of it then. Want to see it now. The build up's going to be great. It's, I want to I'm see going Weidman Rockhold. 194. 194, great card. Great they card. Keep adding to it. Best card, maybe of all time. I don't, maybe I don't of all subscribe time. to that. I don't think we should even talk about that before it actually happens. You're right. All right, this was fun. Enjoy the rest of your breakfast. Should I have some of this? Why going, not? Going for oh it. Oh my yeah. dear God. Oh, man. Look at that. Whoops. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> I want to get right to the meat of the matter. You know what I'm saying? So Here said. it is. Our good friends at MTO Cafe in Las Vegas, Nevada. We appreciate you and salute you. Can't even, can't even get it. Oh, that was good. That was good. Can't even pick it up. Death by chocolate. Death by chocolate. TKO, round one. That is good. Wow. Wow.